You've heard about the death of young Doe, how he was murdered, how someone in his circle was suspected, and how the suspect went on the run. Now, the suspect who thought he could run from the law forever has been found, and guess what? Another has been indicted. But before we start the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you'd like to join this month's giveaway for one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, and then watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck. After young Dolph's death at the bakery, a lot of fingers were pointed at different people, who were in any way related to this case. You wouldn't blame anyone because young Dolph was more than a famous American rapper in different ways to different people. To Yo Gotti, who was the very first person that people suspected killed or ordered the killing of young Dolph because of their beef, Dolph was a rival. Not just any type of rival, but one who constantly dissed Gotti. You would think if anyone wanted Dolph gone, it must be Yo Gotti. To Dolph's mother, Dolph remains his son, and to those on the street, he's their homie, friend, and benefactor. Dolph is widely known for his philanthropist acts. What is expected of these people, he has helped if not to be angry or whatsoever they think knows at least the color of the last clothes he wore. Though that did put a lot of lives at risk as they walk the streets, now the attention is on other people after investigation. Remember the news of Dolph's death read two gunmen got out of a white Mercedes, shot at Dolph and fled in the same car. The car gave the police a lead. Let's pause that there talking about Dolph helping people, not everyone you help will be your friend or be in your foe because they love you. Some will be with you for the benefits they get from you and right there beside you, they feel jealous and want all that you have. And as a result of that, some won't think twice before accepting to kill you. You see, the last category of people is a category that fits straight drop. He's an upcoming rapper and a loud one who's been found in Dolph's circle. He's been seen in Dolph's pictures, which means he may not be too close with Dolph, but he was definitely in his fold. He might have been one of those guys he helped and accepted into his circle. Straight Drop has been closely following Dolph and must have benefited from him one way or the other. He kept being a friend until he suddenly became a suspect of his supposed friend's murder. The Mercedes car that I was talking about was seen in Straight Drop's music video, and more surprisingly the video was shot at the same location where the white Mercedes was abandoned. After the police got a tip about the car, a man living next door to the abandoned house where the white Mercedes was found was killed. Since then, the police have been looking for Stray Drop and even promised a $15,000 reward for anyone that could provide information for apprehending Drop. He was on the run but never a quiet person. He posted on social media recently about turning himself in. On Monday, he wrote, turning myself in on Monday at 2.01. I'm innocent. I'll be back sooner than you can blink. Monday came and Stray Drop was nowhere to be found. He was only using social media to buy time for himself so he could run further away from the law. On the day he promised to turn himself in, Straight Drop instead dropped a song he titled, Track Hawk. That's like saying, hey I'm out here, come get me if you can. Little did he know that there was only a little time left for him to hide. And now, I mean presently, he's been arrested for the murder of young Dolph. Straight Drop, named Justin Johnson, was found and arrested in Indiana on charges of first degree murder, attempted murder, and property theft. On the same day, we gotta know that the second person found alongside Straight Drop was Cornelia Smith and he was indicted on charges of first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, unlawful weapons possession, illegal use of a firearm, and property theft in connection with Dolph's death. In a statement, Shelby County District Attorney General Amy Wyrich confirmed that Smith was indicted on a charge of first-degree murder, as well as additional counts of attempted first-degree murder, convicted felon in possession of a firearm, employment of a firearm in the commission of a dangerous felony, and theft of property over $10,000. As a result, he's being held without bond in the young Dolph shooting case. The attempted murder charge stems from the presence of Dolph's brother, who's been named as a victim of the attempted murder charge. It's believed that Smith carjacked the white Mercedes-Benz on November 10, 2021 from a gas station and was abandoned shortly after young Dolph was killed on November 17th. It must have been pretty easy for Drop to take Dolph's life since he was close to him. These guys seem like paid hitmen who might have not acted directly on their own but were sent by someone or some people. The reason is because of the crazy past of these two. Looking at their past, they should still be serving jail terms and that could have prevented this bad occurrence. In 2017, Drop was charged in the shooting that occurred at Billy Hardwick's All-Star Lanes in East Memphis and he remained on the run. According to the police, about 11.30 p.m. Tuesday, January 31st, 2017, a large group started fighting in the lobby of the lanes. When 18-year-old Justin Johnson left, got a gun from a car in the parking lot and returned, firing several times into the bowling alley from the front door. After shooting, he left in a four-door silver sedan. Four people were hit or grazed by bullets, but none suffered a life-threatening injury. 
A warrant was then issued for Johnson for three counts of attempted second-degree murder, employment of a firearm during the commission of a dangerous felony, and vandalism for shooting a truck. On the 10th of February, Justin Johnson, aka Straight Drop, was arrested and remained behind bars on a $250,000 bond. He was easily arrested because his girlfriend, Raquela Hunter, was located by the police. When she was interrogated, she admitted to assisting him in getting away from the scene. She also said she witnessed her boyfriend shooting at the victims and went as far as pointing them out in a photo lineup. After his arrest, he fully cooperated with law enforcement and admitted to the shooting. As a result of that, he was given a sentence of five years in prison, followed by probation. After just six months, Drop was released from prison because of his good conduct and because he didn't have any criminal record before then. Then some months later, in May 2018, he got into trouble again. It seemed his so-called good behavior has expired just in the span of a few weeks. In this case, he drove a vehicle to an apartment complex that is near the Memphis airport. Security guards at the apartment complex had asked him to provide a form of identification, but he had failed to provide any. They had to search him and later found some illegal items in his possession, which included a loaded Glock 23, bags of marijuana, a digital scale, and some cash. These items were seized and he was arrested on a federal weapons charge. The judge had to revoke his probation immediately, which means that he had added to his number of offenses and punishments. It was supposed to mean a long time and big time problem for him since he was not yet done serving the initial five year sentence. Well, he ended up going to a federal jail for the new crime and had to serve the two sentences at the same time. After he served two years, I guess he brought back his deceitful good behavior that the judicial system decided that he was fit to be reintroduced back into the community. They let him go, but he was under supervision that wasn't really supervision. After he was suspected of the murder of young Dolph, the judge who presided over his previous case, Judge Christopher Kraft, said something that might have caused a problem for Drop in an interview. When the judge was asked why Stray Drop had been initially released on probation, he said, The first time he used the gun, we gave him some slack because of him immediately cooperating and doing everything, and taking programs he didn't have to take, and working on things. Because he used the word cooperating, Drop was accused of snitching. In Cornelius Smith's case, he also did something that he was supposed to get punished for, but the case was not even discussed in the news. On February 27, 2018, a woman reported Smith for kidnapping. According to the woman, Smith is her child's father who came to the apartment to take her away to return a pair of shoes. After the pair of shoes was returned, they left the place to go back home. On their way home, they got to the woman's street, and Smith was supposed to turn, but he didn't. The woman asked why he never stopped, but she got no response. He just kept driving. She grabbed the doe in an attempt to escape by jumping from the vehicle. That was when she realized that the doors were locked. Then Smith threatened her with a pistol, saying he was going to blow her brains off if she tried anything else. He then started to punch and kick her on the left side of her face, saying the woman cheated on him. That was when the woman knew why she was being punished by Smith. Smith also threatened to kill the woman's family, saying they were the reason the woman cheated on him. As if all he did wasn't enough, he kept the woman in his house for a good three days without giving her access to the phone or anything. After the third day, he then drove her away from his house and dropped her off in the corner of a street. The woman was helpless and scared, so she called the police. I don't know why, and nobody knows why the case was dismissed. People think if these guys were punished accordingly, they might not have been able to kill Dolph as they'd be behind bars. That sounds reasonable to me. People like Smith and Justin Johnson should not be left roaming on the streets as they're dangerous. Another thing is the car that was said to be CEO Bobby's ended up being a stolen vehicle that never belonged to Bobby, JoJo Splat, or Straight Drop. They all used the car as a show-off only to look rich on social media before the car was used for the murders. Now that both Smith and Straight Drop are behind bars, let's hope the dead get the right justice this time. Alright guys, this is all I've got for you on this video. Remember to put your thoughts in the comments section. Hey you, yeah you, you like this video? Great, we've got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like, and all you gotta do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees, but you have to click on it fast because this message is self-destruct in 5 seconds.